hello guys welcome once more to another video on our youtube channel so in this video we are going to be looking at the southwest regional mock 2024 for that math paper two question number five that was on conic sections credits to grace from lise blenge limbe who actually reached out to me from youtube here asking me to 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 analyze the equation so thank you once more grace for reaching out to me so let's get started all right so the question was on conic sections and it reads show that the curve with polar coordinates r theta where r squared is equal to this so um actually in the original question it was arrow not arrow squared but when i was solving i realized that it's actually supposed to be arrow squared okay so show that this the curve with polar equation with polar coordinates arrow theta where arrow squared is this is an ellipse in the xy plane find the eccentricity of the ellipse b show that the point three cos theta two sine theta lies on e also find the equation of the normal to e at the point p given that the normal at p on e meets the coordinate axis at the points a and b c show that when theta is pylon 4 the area of the triangle AOB is 25 on 24 square units. So guys, if you're battling with conics, I think this video is for you. Okay, make sure you like the video, you share the video with your friends as you watch. Also comment. Alright, so um, I'm going to analyze the equation part after part. So we first of all need to convert this polar equation of the curve into its Cartesian equation and the Cartesian equation is normally supposed to give us an ellipse so I'm going to give you guys the basics on how we can always convert polar curves to or how we can always convert um, curves in in polar planes to curves in Cartesian planes all right so first of all if I am in the, the if I am in a Cartesian plane for example if I consider a point a having x and y coordinate there's a x coordinate and there is a y coordinate now um how do i relate the x and y coordinates with the arrow and theta coordinates so theta is basically the angle that the line from the origin to the point makes with a positive x axis we call it theta and arrow is basically the distance from the origin to the point so um to get a relationship this is a right angle triangle okay and since that's a right angle triangle the first thing we have is that arrow squared is equal to x squared plus y squared because arrow squared is a hypotenuse x squared is a adjacent and y squared is a opposite so from the pythagorean theorem arrow squared is x squared plus y squared if i take um if i take sine theta sine theta will give me opposite which is y divided by hypotenuse which is arrow and if i take cos theta cos theta will give me adjacent which is x divided by the hypotenuse which is arrow so from those two things we get arrow to be x to be arrow cos theta and y to be arrow sine theta so these are the basic things you are going to be using to, to to convert this equation in the polar plane to the equation in the cartesian plane but anyways how does an ellipse looks like so in the cartesian plane an ellipse has standard equation x squared on a squared plus y squared on b squared equal to one and the center of this ellipse is zero zero that's why we are we call it a standard equation there's also a general equation where the center is not zero zero the center is is is, is actually given so um here is a standard equation of an ellipse okay um in subsequent videos i'm going to do I'm going to show you how to how like the general equation of an ellipse how does it look like all right so this standard equation we are just taking the standard equation where the center of the ellipse is, is at zero zero okay now what about the eccentricity the eccentricity of an ellipse follows the formula a squared into one minus e squared equal to b squared all, all right so when you have your ellipse in this form you can just deduce what a squared and b squared are from this formula you now find the eccentricity so let's get back to the equation we are given that arrow squared is 36 divided by 9 minus 5 cos squared theta since cos theta is x divided by arrow all right i can cross multiply and i'm going to get arrow squared into 9 minus 5 cos squared theta then i replace cos squared theta with x over arrow all squared 
right since cos theta is x on arrow so cos square theta I, mean, I need to square the x on arrow so doing that i basically have when i cross multiply i get arrow squared times the denominator but replacing cos theta with x on arrow we also need to square then we equate the result to 36. now um when i take x on arrow all squared i get x squared on arrow squared i introduce the arrow squared into the two terms in the bracket i get nine arrow squared this arrow squared cancels with this arrow squared and we just have five x squared all right equal to 36. now from here we know that arrow squared is x squared plus y squared so we get nine into x squared plus y squared minus five x squared equal to 36. now we can subtract like terms 9x squared minus 5x squared is 4x squared then we are going to be left with plus 9y squared right plus 9y squared equal to 36. From there, we can divide all through by 36 so that we get 1 in the right-hand side, okay, so that it resembles the standard equation of an ellipse. Then we know that 4 on 36 is the same as 1 over 9. Since 4 is going to go into 4 1 time and 36 9 times. 9 over 36 is 1 over 4. Since 9, we go here 1 time and go here 4 times. And we know that 9 is the same as 3 squared and 4 is the same as 2 squared. So this is the equation of the ellipse in the xy plane. So we have proven that the polar, the, the Cartesian equation of this polar curve is an ellipse in the xy plane. I think from here we can easily find the eccentricity using the formula a squared into 1 minus e squared equal to b squared. Knowing fully well that a squared is 3 squared, which is 9, and b squared is 2 squared, which is 4. So from there we get 9 into 1 minus e squared equal to 4. We do the algebra, we get e squared to be 1 minus 4 or 9. 1 minus 4 or 9 is um, 5 or 9. So it means that e squared is 5 or 9. We take the square root on both sides. And since eccentricity is positive, we ignore the negative square root. So we just take the positive square root of, of 5 or 9, which will give us the square root of 5 divided by 3, since the square root of 9 is 3. So the eccentricity of the ellipse is the square root of 5 divided by 3. Okay. All right. So um, next thing we need to look is for um yeah i think that's all for the first question all right so you have a little exercise to to, to to drill yourself so i want you to sketch the ellipse and also to find the four chi coordinates of the ellipse okay if you are able to do that you can get to me on whatsapp oh, my number is not on the screen anyways i'm going to put my number in the in the comment section you get to me to show me if if um to to, to 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 mark if your ellipse is correct and if your coordinates if your focal coordinates are also correct all right the b part says we should show that the point p with coordinates three cos theta and two sine theta lies on the ellipse e and we should find the equation of the normal to the ellipse at the point p okay so first of all um i will try to give you the equation of the normal so the equation of the normal at the point cd is a line y minus d that is y minus the y coordinate of the point to be equal to the gradient of the normal into x minus the x coordinate of the point okay so this is a normal at a point now what how do i find the gradient of the normal so first of all this m okay m is a derivative at the point c d where m is actually the gradient of the normal so m1 which is a gradient of the of, of the of the sorry m is a gradient of the tangent okay and we know that the tangent and the normal are perpendicular so the product of the gradient should give you negative one that's why the gradient of the normal is negative one over the gradient of the tangent okay and this m here is a gradient of the tangent and the gradient of the tangent is the derivative at the point all right so um let's go back to solving the first part of the equation which is asking us to show that this point lies on the curve on the ellipse so first of all i'm just going to take a general note oh this is supposed to be cd so from a general note <clears throat> the point the point cd The point CD belongs to the ellipse if the point satisfies the equation of the ellipse. It means that if I replace the x coordinate of the point 
and the y coordinate of the point and i simplify the left hand side i must get one as the right hand side okay and if that happens then we say that this point belongs to the ellipse so in this case if this point belongs to the ellipse it therefore means that i need to replace x with the x coordinate of the point i replace y with the y coordinate and i simplify if i get one as my answer it means that it actually belongs okay let us replace i'm going to replace x with three cos theta with square i replace y with two sine theta with square now three cos theta all squared is three squared cos squared theta the three squared will cancel with this three squared we are going to be left with cos squared theta two sine theta all squared is two squared sine squared theta the two squared will cancel with this two squared and we are going to be left with sine squared theta and we know that cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to one and with this it suffices for us to conclude that this point belongs to the ellipse okay now um the second part of the equation is asking us to find the equation of the normal to the ellipse at the point p so we already have the formula to find the normal at the point and we are just lacking we have z z is the y coordinate which is 2 sine theta and c is the x coordinate which is 3 cos theta so all we need is m1 but to get m1 we must get m and what is m the derivative at the point p so i need to differentiate the equation of my ellipse so i'm going to i'm going to come back with this 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 was the equation we have we had okay though we can still differentiate this one but i prefer to differentiate this one all right because it is from this equation when we divided all two by 36 that we got this equation so if i differentiate this equation with respect to x i will differentiate every term with respect to x and i and i, and I introduce the operations involved so when i differentiate 4x squared with respect to x i get 8x when i differentiate 9y squared with respect to x i get 9y dy by dx since y is not in terms of x that's implicit differentiation anyways doing that we get 8x plus uh, so we have 18y not 9y 18y because the two we need to drop down to me the 9 to get 18 so we get 18y then we need to add dy by dx here we actually did 8x dx by dx but the x by the x is one right that's why we don't we just write 8x here we now have 18y dy by the x once we differentiate 36 we get zero from there we can make dy by the x a subject we are going to get negative 4x divided by 9y now we know that the derivative at the point p is actually the gradient of the tangent which is m from there we, we are we are going to get m1 um directly so the derivative at the point p i need to replace the x coordinate and the y i need to replace x and y with the x and y coordinate of the point p so we get negative 4 over 9 in the place of x i replace 3 cos theta since is the x coordinate of the point p in the place of y i replace with 2 sine theta since it is the y coordinate of the point p simplifying we get that our m which is a derivative at the point is negative 2 third times cos theta divided by sine theta so what is one over what what is negative one over m is our m1 so if i take negative one divided by this quantity if you use if you do your algebra you're going to get three divided by two the negatives are going to cancel and then we just need to invert so the denominator goes to the numerator and the numerator goes to the denominator so the denominator is three sine theta that is it in the numerator and the numerator is two cos theta here is it in the denominator so this gives us the gradient of the normal so the normal line is y minus the y coordinate of the point which is 2 sine theta equal to the gradient of the normal which we have had into x minus the x coordinate of the point which is 3 cos theta okay so from there we have this all we need to do is simplification i'm going to multiply all through by 2 cos theta I multiply y with 2 cos theta, I get 2y cos theta. I multiply 2 sine theta with 2 cos theta, I get 4 sine theta cos theta. Now, we are going to be left with 3 sine theta into x minus 3 cos theta. We also multiply everything on the right-hand side with 3 sine theta. We multiply with x, we get 3x sine theta. We multiply with 3 cos theta, we get 9 sine theta cos theta. Now, I need to carry um, this 4 sine theta cos theta to the right hand side okay and i'll be adding and adding it to negative 9 is the same as 
taking it minus 9 sine theta cos theta. 4 sine theta cos theta minus 9 sine theta cos theta is negative 5 sine theta cos theta. Also, I'm, I'm going to bring 3x sine theta to the left-hand side. So, I simplify and I get that the equation of the normal to, to the curve at the point P is given by 2y cos theta minus 3x sine theta equal to negative 5 sine theta cos theta. All right, now the last part of the equation says, given that the normal at the point P on the ellipse meets the coordinate axis at the point A and B, the coordinate axis are the X and Y axis. We have to show that if we take theta to be 45 degrees or pylon 4, the area of the triangle AOB is 25 on 24 square units. Okay, so first of all, we are going to begin by finding the coordinates of A and the coordinates of B. Then we do a little illustration on the XY plane and see the triangle and then we find the area. All right, so we know that um, if you are getting, first of all, we are getting a coordinate axis, so we are going to find the coordinates of A and B. So if you are getting the X axis, then Y is zero, okay. So if we replace y to be 0 here, we are going to get negative 3x sine theta to be negative 5 sine theta cos theta. We divide both sides by negative 3 sine theta, and we get our x to be 5 on 3 times cos theta. So we can assume that maybe when you're getting the x-axis, then that is a point A. We could also assume that it's a point B. Since the equation did not tell us what A and B are, basically, we just know that A and B are the points where the normal gets the coordinate axis so we could attribute a to when it is getting the x axis or when it's getting the y axis we are still going to have the same area at the end of the day so i can just call the point a to be the point when the normal is getting the x axis so the x coordinate of a is what we have found and the y coordinate is zero since it is getting the x axis now when the normal is getting the um when p sorry it's not p when e when e not p okay because it is the ellipse that is getting so when e gets the y axis then x is zero so when you're getting a y axis it means that x is zero we need to get your y coordinate since we know your x coordinate already so we are going to have two y cos theta equal to negative five sine theta cos theta we divide both sides by two and we get our y to be negative five on two times sine theta so the point b the x coordinate is zero since you're getting the y axis and the y coordinate is negative five on two sine theta now let us introduce let us draw indicate these points on the xy plane so if you consider the xy plane um now let's start with the point b the point b is on the y axis and it is negative five sine theta okay so um since theta is pylon four all right then sine theta will be positive it therefore means that negative five on two sine theta will automatically be negative since you are multiplying a negative number and a positive function since theta is is pylon 4 so it means that we are going to have something here that is on the y-axis since x is 0 but it's going to be totally negative that is below the y-axis below the x-axis so we have negative 5 on 2 sine theta now what about the coordinate the the, the, the point a the point a you are now on the x-axis since the y coordinate is zero so we can call it five on three cos theta now we need the triangle a o b so we need to link a and b so that we have the triangle a o b now the triangle a o b is basically a right angle triangle and what is the area the area of the right angle triangle is half base times height the base is a distance from o to a and the height is a distance from O to B. Remember, I said distance, so we just take the positive. We don't consider the negative since we are finding area. Okay, area is a scalar quantity, so it has magnitude. It has no direction, and magnitude is always positive, so we ignore the negative sign. All right, so the area is half. The base of the triangle is, um, in fact, we can consider anyone to be the base. Uh, maybe the base could be 5 on 2 sine theta or the height, but we know that um, multiplication is is um is commutative a times b is the same as b times a so we have half times five on three cos theta times five on two sine theta when we simplify we get 25 which is five times five is 25 two times three is six six times two is 12 so we get 25 divided by 12 
cos theta sine theta this is a this is a value of the area in terms of theta but we have been told that we, we need to take theta as pylon 4 once we take theta as pylon 4 we just need to find cos pylon 4 and sine pylon 4 but cos pylon 4 times sine pylon 4 is half okay because uh, there is a problem here here is supposed to be 12 not 24 okay here is supposed to be 12 yes um, cos pylon 4 is 1 on root 2 sine pylon 4 is 1 on root 2 1 on root 2 times 1 on root 2 is equal to 1 over 2 and when you multiply 25 on 12 by 1 divided by 2 you get oh again the 1 divided by 2 is not there again sorry for the error so the final answer will just give us a 25 divided by 12 okay so this 1 over 2 is not there because we need to take 25 on 12 times the 1 over 2 which will give us 25 on 24 so that is a final proof all right thank you guys for watching make sure you like the video share the video comment and also subscribe to the channel see you guys in the next video and if you have any problems to propose to me you can always send a question to me on whatsapp if you need a video solution i'm going to try my best to to to, to explain and upload the video and give the credits to you thank you guys once more for watching and very important make sure you share the video okay see you in the next video